Welcome to another vlog. In this video, I'm going to show you the method that I use for hacking and reverse engineering this VW CAN bus system, which is part of a project that I'm currently working on. There are many available tools and methods to use those tools to achieve the same purpose. There are professional tools and there are hobby grade or open source tools. The professional ones are probably more advanced and are going to help you to achieve the results in an easier fashion, but those usually cost several thousands of dollars, so they are out of the reach of the average hobbyist. The tools that I'm going to be using today are very accessible price-wise, and on top of that, they are open source. For hardware, I'm going to be using the Cantact uh, USB to CAN interface adapter dongle. So this is going to enable our operating system to connect and uh, receive and send messages on the CAN bus system. As software, I'm going to be using an app called SavvyCAN, which is an open source tool for hacking and reverse engineering CAN buses. Links for places where you can order the uh, CANTACT dongle or uh, links for uh, downloading SavvyCAN will be placed in the description below the video. Also, in the description below, you will find a link to PCBWay.com, which is my favorite PCB manufacturer. They provide excellent quality with fast turnaround times, and currently they are having this Christmas year-end sale with a bunch of stuff like free coupons, discount codes, various contests, so now it's a good time to get a good deal on those boards you are designing check out their offer linked below. The first step for creating our development environment is to install Ubuntu desktop, either standalone or as a virtual machine. SavvyCAN is a cross-platform Qt-based C++ program, so it can run on Windows as well. However, I'm going to be using Ubuntu for this because on Linux we can take advantage of built-in support for CAN through SocketCAN, which enables a CAN interface to exist just like any other network interface, for example. And this has some performance advantages as well as some usability advantages. Since Ubuntu is not my main OS, I'm going to grab the latest image from their website and set up a virtual machine using VirtualBox. I won't go into the uh, details on how to do that. There is plenty of good information out there, uh, so just do a uh, Google search. Step number two is to flash our Cantac dongle with the Candlelight firmware because by default the Cantac dongle comes flashed with a firmware that will create a virtual serial port, which is okay if you plan to do the work on Windows and use Windows-based tools. However, we can flash the Cantac dongle with the uh, mentioned Candlelight firmware, which implements CAN over USB protocol that will enable us to use uh, CANTACT natively under Linux. And this will give us a more stable interface capable of higher bit rates. It's pretty easy to flash the dongle with this firmware uh, on Windows and on, on Linux as well. And I will link a couple of pages with instructions on how to do it in the description below. And I'm also going to uh, walk you through the process on screen. Uh, I'm going to do it on my newly created Ubuntu machine. It's a matter of executing a few commands after putting the uh, dongle into bootloader mode. So make sure you flash your dongle with the candlelight firmware before you continue. Do not skip this step, uh, otherwise it will not work later on. Start by moving the boot jumper on the two pins away from the screw connector. Then plug the dongle into USB. If you are using a virtual machine, uh, you're going to have to connect the USB device to the virtual machine, like I'm showing here. Next, install DFU utils by running this command. Next, download the binary we're going to flash on the microcontroller, and you can get this pre-compiled version, or you can compile your own. I just, uh, I'm just going to use the pre-compiled version. And next, I can flash the board with uh, this command. And when the process is complete, um, I can just disconnect the dongle from USB. Uh, I will switch the boot jumper back towards the uh, screw connectors and just reconnect to the uh, USB port and the dongle should be ready now. Step number three is to configure our CAN interface. And if you have Ubuntu installed standalone, you just need to plug the uh, CANTAC dongle flashed with the candlelight firmware, assign it to the virtual machine, and we can start configuring the new CAN interface. We're going to need a few commands to do this, and uh, I will place these in the description below if you feel like uh, copy pasting. 
First, we uh, list the available interfaces with IP link show command. This is uh, our interface, it's listed as CAN0. Next, we configure the uh, CAN0 interface for 500 kilobit uh, baud rate. That is uh, the speed of the bus that I'm trying to hack. It's important to get this right. And I did some online research and found out that in a VW CAN bus, the, uh, the various systems uh, are connected onto various buses. I plan to hack the cluster which runs on the powertrain bus that is 500 kilobit. If you plan to hack the infotainment bus, for example, that's a 100 kilobit. So make sure you get the speed right. And finally, we can bring up the interface using this command. Our newly configured CAN interface is now ready to be used. And we can check that with the IPLink command, which is uh, showing that the interface is up. I'm not going to go into too much details about what the CAN bus uh, is and uh, its properties. There are plenty of good resources on YouTube on that subject and I encourage you to go research that before you start any work on the subject. For the purpose of this task, you just need to know it's a two-wire differential type bus. So you will have a CAN high and a CAN low wire and you'll also need a uh, 120 ohm uh, termination resistor on the two ends of the bus. Uh, our Cantact hardware has one of these resistors on board so we can enable it with this jumper. But for example, if it's just our adapter and another CAN bus device on our bench, uh, that might be needed. However, if you're tapping into a car's CAN bus network, these termination resistors are already in place on the various devices present on the bus. So it's likely you won't need to enable it on the Cantact dongle. This will vary on a case-by-case -case basis. For this tutorial, I connected my cluster's CAN bus to the contact dongle, so just two wires, CAN high and CAN low. That's it. The final step is to grab the latest available binary for Savvy CAN, or you can grab the sources and compile your own if you want the absolute latest version or if you plan to do changes in the code. You also need to set uh, permissions on the binary to be able to run it. And now we are ready to run SavvyCAN and configure our CAN interface into the software. We have a socket CAN type interface. It should automatically detect it. And uh, once selected and configured as socket CAN, uh, the messages should start flowing as long as you have the wires connected right and you have the right bus speed and you have a device uh, publishing messages on the bus. Just a quick note, the bus speed settings in SavvyCAN do not work. Uh, don't try adjusting it from uh, inside the software. You will have to adjust it on the interface settings in the operating system by bringing down the interface, changing the speed, and then bring it, bringing it back up again with the IPLink commands shown earlier. And now we can start hacking and discovering the secrets of this CAN bus. Uh, but before I start showing you some of the nice features of the software, let me mention that SavvyCAN is a work in progress and as far as I noticed, a pretty much one-man job. And this means there will be software bugs, you will experience segmentation faults which will crash the program. If you can help fix some of these, then please contribute to this project on GitHub. I am experiencing a bunch of crashes myself, especially when using DBC uh, filters. But since I'm a lousy programmer, I can only help by providing debug logs. Now let's get into the features. This main window will show you the incoming messages and my preferred way of working with this is with the overwrite option ticked. This will keep the list clean and only refresh the payload with new data for each uh, ID. At this point, you need to have a good understanding of how a CAN message is composed, which I once again encourage you to research on your own before doing any actual work. Now, having all of these messages in here might be a good start, but it's not very helpful if there are dozens of messages floating around. It's very hard to find the one you are interested in. So let's imagine you are pressing a button and you want to figure out which CAN ID and which byte um, it triggers a change. Well, for doing that, uh, I like using the uh, sniffer function where you can start by looking at the whole list of IDs that you are receiving or you can narrow it down to just a few but it will give you this graphical view of what bytes are changing and you could correlate that with the press of a button or a certain action. You can even show it with bit level details. You can choose to fade out the inactive bytes so this can be a very powerful uh, function for narrowing down the particular uh, ID of the message you are interested in and the particular bits that are changing. 
You can also view data as a temporal graph, which is uh, very similar to a waterfall type graph you would uh, get for uh, a radio spectrum analysis, only that this is static and it can help you get a feel of what are the ideas that uh, process data the most. So there are lots of goodies in here and you can couple these uh, messages with DBC file decoding. If you haven't heard about DBC format, it's like a database, it's a text-based file for describing a, a particular canvas uh, implementation in words to actually decode the bytes and hex values to some meaningful information. There are also nice features for sending of CAN messages and you can start uh, with uh, a simple custom sending option where you can define a series of messages each with its own ID and payload as well as the interval at which they will be sent uh, there is even the option of uh, doing operations on the data bytes and you could say like uh, d1 equals d0 so with each send event byte 1 will get the value of byte 0. This can be really powerful for sending a series of uh, custom messages, also messages that change uh, the payload based on other factors. Another useful feature that I have used a lot to discover the addresses and values at which my CAN bus cluster responds is called fuzzing. With this function, this is probably my preferred function of the software and with this you can blast a range of CAN IDs with random data and watch your device to see how it responds. This was extremely useful for me, it helped me discover for example what are the IDs and the uh, values that my cluster expects for turning on or off the various light indicators or the various messages shown on the LCD. But I've also hit some limitations with this function. For example, that random blasting of values across a range of IDs might create the necessary sequence of messages or values needed to trigger something. Then you go on and try to recreate that final message which you think it's the one you are looking for but you realize it's doing nothing on its own and it likely requires a certain sequence of messages or uh, values to be present uh, for that function to trigger or be executed. Uh, but we're getting into the uh, details of the device I'm trying to hack here and I've only scratched the surface of what Savvy can, can do. If you are currently working with CAN and would like to give these tools a try, just check out the links I've placed in the description. Uh, this was just a first video from a um, series that will follow. Uh, as I'm getting familiar with the VW CAN bus and learning more about it, I will post more videos on the subject and a project video should follow soon. My personal end goal is to create this small device that I can place in my car, connect it to the uh, infotainment bus for example and have it generate a custom menu on the cluster display where I can print custom information. The platform of my car is uh, PQ35 and this is the exact cluster that I have on my car and I know this option exists and this uh, cluster has a uh, certain range of IDs and a protocol under which you can send commands uh, to it and it will draw whatever you instruct it to do in a custom menu. And I have seen even a couple of commercial products that do exactly this uh, but my goal is to research this topic and publish the project as open source so others can reuse the code and uh, maybe build it into their own custom projects. That was all for today. As usual, I would appreciate your feedback in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to share some uh, information that would be helpful for my project if you've done any work uh, on uh, CAN bus generating these uh, custom menus on the clusters. Just reach out to me. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. It's December, so why not consider supporting your favorite creators on Patreon. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.